Hello, everybody. My name is Ragan Yan, and I'm here with Jade Yuki. Hi. <laughs> and we're going to be continuing the letter, finally, after how many weeks? <laughs> like but two, three. Okay. We've, been, we've been doing our best, so. All right, I vaguely remember where, we're, where we were at, but um, we had that conversation, phone call with Zach, and talking about the priest, so I'm assuming that's what's going to happen next time. So, we'll see. Right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare, please. <laughs> get me away. Sleep comes easier tonight. For the first time in a long time, I dream. Of clear skies, of unrestrained laughter from children playing in the streets, and of small cramped cramped dwellings? Why do you want cramped dwellings? She's from the Philippines. So they don't really Cr I feel like cramped is the bad a bad word for that though. I don't know. Cramp kinda seems negative to me. Well they're all kinda on the But it's fine. Other, anyway. it's, it's fine. I see what she means. It's fine. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. However, this is home to me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Alright. Don't question her home. Alright. Right. Right. Just cramped just seemed like the bad a bad word for that, but yeah, I guess. Morning dawn dawns bright and clear the following day. Although the air still feels muggy and I miss the chilly autumn weather. It's one of those rare weekends when I'm up even before my alarm rings. If it wasn't for Zach's call last night, I'd probably sleep in. I don't blame her. <laughs> I really don't. After everything she's been through, I really don't. When 9 a.m. rolls around, I'm ready on my. I'm already on my way to Ermengard Mansion. I don't know if you want to go back there. She to think. She doesn't really have a choice. <laughs> to think that I'd have to go back again, I'd be lying if I say I'm. Ex I'm excited. I don't have two anymore. Rose happily gave me paperwork duty when I volunteered cool. We're on the last phase of the sale, too. Well, almost. Papers to sign, documents to finalize, various other legalities to settle with the current owner and all that, still. Never mind that its new owners want everything done within the week when the process typically takes more than that. They want it done? We'll get it done. I really, really don't understand rich people. Like, Me either, I'm man. I... <sighs> But money can do wonders. I won't be surprised if they'll, they'll be able to push the process just a little more like what they did to secure the house. But there's enough money involved. Mm -hmm. The point is I'm under no obligation to return to the house anymore. Well, I think they're the England's Kardashians anyway. Yeah. So. Uh -uh. That's, a good, uh, that's a good comparison. Running is an option, of course. I can now move on to another property and forget everything. However, at the end of the day, it's always my conscience that wins. What if something happens to those who have seen the letter? Ash, Zach, Becca, Miss... McCall the rights. <laughs> <laughs> the guilt will follow me to my grave. I just love how she they pronounced her name. <laughs> it was great. The mansion looms as we approach. Whispers welcoming me back. Shadows calling. Oh god. I hope this is the last time. Please. <laughs> it's not going to be, but mm. I hope. Oh, there's, there's the, the priest. priest. Alright, so you get to see this conversation yeah, that you've seen this one. So that'll be interesting. They are engaged in a deep, quiet conversation when I find them in the mansion's front gardens. But even with familiar company, it is impossible to feel at ease here. Um, no matter who I'm with, the feeling of being watched is there, like the very place itself is aware of its trespassers. You know, if the priest had, like, red hair instead of brown, it kind of looks like Mark. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it really does! <laughs> like, the glasses and everything. Zack, on the other hand, doesn't seem to notice. Or he simply doesn't care. Or he's already used to it. I could never tell with him. Sometimes, sometimes, he's almost as hard to read as Ash. Almost. Mm. <laughs> At least De Zach doesn't ask for him as much patience as dealing with Ash does, and that says plenty about him. Miracle of miracles how the two have ended up the best of friends. He waves at me as I approach. True to his promise, Zach has also brought his friend with him. Father Norman. Somehow I expected him to look older. Oh, don't be surprised. They say people who have found their calling are getting younger these days. S sorry, Father! I didn't mean to say that out loud. She said that out loud? He, um, he has kind of a similar smile to, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is with the creepy smiles in this game? I don't know. Taken, though I admit I'm a bit surprised. I didn't think someone would ask this house to be blessed after all these years. You've heard of it, Father? In passing. The occasional rumors and talk by the locals, nothing new. You don't spend years serving the church here without hearing a random hearsay here and there. You never mention what you've done to those, Father. Ah, but he who goes down to the grave does not come up. He shall never return to his house, nor shall his place know him anymore. But what I saw... May not be what you think. It depends entirely on what you mean by it. 
if you're talking about spirit beings, angels, demons, then yes. Are we talking about the spirits of people who have departed? The word makes it clear that once the deceased has left us, they are gone. <laughs> but of course, I didn't come here to bore you with a lecture. No, it was enlightening, Father. Thank you. Just remember that a god who loves his children would never let them go once the time comes. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. my father tells well. me. Your father must be a good man. He raised you well, no doubt. Well then, shall we? What? Go away! <laughs> what? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Regardless of what it is, I'm sure the mansion's new owners would appreciate such sincere intentions. From a... I didn't want to talk. From a stranger, How no dare less. you I'm interrupt sorry. the holy I'm man! Sorry. A relief. This way he won't see how tightly I'm clutching the straps of my bag. Father Norma's probably trying to put us put me at ease. But the worry, the cold, restless, foreboding feeling has firmly lodged itself in my stomach, making its presence known with every step we take towards the house. Hey, you okay? <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, okay. This place gives me the creeps. Yeah. Uh, that would be my answer if I was really I mean, there, that's... but... I'd rather be honest. I don't know if our conversation's gonna like go down, but uh, good or bad? Good. 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 Because I was honest. Yeah. Cool. It's hard to lie when Zach gives you that look. It's just there. Like the kind that implores a silent appeal. I'm not sure if he's even doing it consciously. Another breeze blows, and I try not to shiver. Try not to listen to the voices that may or may not be there. This place really gives me the creeps. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem more than an ordinary house to me, though. Damn, I should have brought my camera with me. I saw a few areas that'd be good for a shoot. Yeah, this would be really great for a horror movie. <laughs> Do you think the allow it? Shh. What if you catch something? Or someone in one of the pictures? Is this going to be Fatal Frame again? <laughs> I mean, it just means they want to be seen, doesn't it? D don't ask for it. It's not like we can stop them if they do. You're really not helping, Zack. Alright, alright, sorry. Don't worry. I don't think whatever's inside this house will do anything. I'm here, yeah? I'll take care of them. Or I think I can. <laughs> I don't know if you could do anything about spirits, but... You're not that scary, but thanks. <laughs> I'll be sure to run behind you if I see one. Ridiculous talk, though the temporary reprieve it lends is more than welcome. He offers me a smile in return, the least he could do. And with a silent motion of his head, he gestures for us to move ahead, while my own fears are left forgotten for the time being. The thing inside my bag the things inside my bag clatter softly against each other while I rummage for the keys to the mansion. I should have heard the telltale jiggle by now, but didn't I put it in my bag last night? Did she come all the way out here and forget the keys? Seconds later, I'm sitting on my heels, and one after another, I'm taking out everything from every pocket, every slip. It'll be a pain to put everything back later, but I'm sure I'm just under these. Nothing. Oh, oh man. Of all the times to forget. Is something the matter? No, I, I... I'm sorry, Father. I think I left the key... No use coming up with excuses, and right after they both taking the time to go this far away from the city. With a heavy sigh, I grab the door handle to pull myself up, a string of apologies ready at the tip of my tongue. Careful, Bella! We've spoken with the current owners. Well, technically, you're not yet the owners, but... There's a brief moment of confusion, and then I'm falling. Oh, the door's open. The momentum of the door swinging open pulls me back first uh, into the mansion's foyer before I can make sense of what's happening. Ow, 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 my back! What the... Isabella? There she is. <laughs> this is awkward. No time to nurse my bruised back or make up excuses because the next thing I know is Zach's gently pulling me upright by my arm. Rose looks down on me with a mixture of apprehension and something I couldn't quite place. I'd say it's a relief, but... Ah, sheesh. Good going, Isabella, right after you volunteered to work on the papers. And standing behind her... Ma'am Hannah! The rich card is... Mr. Wright! Oh, Isabella. We always meet in the most... Interesting circumstances. And you still can't get my name right. <laughs> A complete understatement, darling. What are they doing in my house? I mean, technically. <laughs> in your house, yes. It's not finished yet. Abruptly, he waves his hand at Zack and Father Norman like their presence is a slight against his own. I thought you said you wanted to do paperwork duty. What are you doing here? Like a deer caught in the headlights. 
Unfair, Rose. That's putting me on the spot. And it leaves me no other choice but to answer. I, uh, the reason why I'm here? Well, spit it out, Lily. We don't have all day. It's not my name either. <laughs> I'm just here to make sure everything is fine before you move in. I am so sorry, Mama. You said I'd go to hell if I lie. <laughs> I literally will after this, but there's no other way. Well, it isn't entirely a lie. I am here to make sure no one disturbs them after they move in. Just so happens that what I'm checking for and trying to drive away is one of the paranormal parade. Oh, the house appears impeccably fine to me. Mr. Wright shifts his eyes around in a careful manner, as if he's looking for faults in every crevice of the house. The grin on his face, though, when he returns his attention to me, is similar to what my Kuya Jordan had often given me when he was up to something. Usually a scare prank that inevitably ended in me crying. I never did forget the way my brother sneered at me then. Part of me thinks that perhaps if I hadn't been the object of his mischief in childhood, I would have grown a little braver. <laughs> Come on, little Lily. Lying doesn't do that cute little face any justice. Uh, mm. Don't you call me cute and little at the same sentence? <laughs> no. I know your wife next to you. Patient man. Now, why are you really here? Right now, in the face of an almost identical expression, perhaps even crueler than what I'm used to, the lie I told falls apart. The truth. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, and why would we ever need to have this house blessed? He says. Uh. I shrink under his scrutinizing gaze. For a second, I think that he'll start shouting at me. Please don't yell at me. Instead, he laughs. Not the mocking jerry kind, but one wondering if he's hearing things right. I say he was amused, but I honestly couldn't understand what was so funny with what I just said. Was it really that weird? Wasn't it a custom here? I wish Becca was here to explain stuff like this. That's rich coming from you. When we saw Devlin Court, you didn't. It's a small custom back home. I thought it would be nice to do something that would bring positive energy to the mansion since this place has been empty for years. And the papers, Isabella? I hope you did those first before this. Of course I did. It's almost done, in fact. But there are some items I still have to double check before finalizing everything. You know I don't sign without a thorough inspection. And well, this is what this is for too. I just thought it would be more efficient to do both at the same time. She's really milking him. Mm -hmm. Dear, I thought you didn't want to go back. A job is a job, Rose. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. Oh, well if that's the case, then go ahead. <laughs> no need to be so hard on her, Rosie. I personally think it's a nice touch. I was actually thinking of the same thing, but you beat me to it. Darling, Buttercup, please. You know these things don't work. No offense meant to the holy man, of course. That does not explain the nigger, though. Oh. Mmm. Whoa. Mm. Oh, shit. All of a sudden, there's an awkward silence that even Rose, of all people, seems reluctant to break. Ooh. Although a desire to do so is evident in the way her eyes nervously shifts to Mr. Wright. Meanwhile, Zack's grip on my arm suddenly tightens. He doesn't say anything further, but there's a conflicted look on him when I glance up. That's the face he makes only when he desperately wants to give someone a piece of his mind, but he chooses not to do so, mostly to avoid confrontation or fanning the flames to an argument. Ooh. Mm. He has always been, always, always been like this. Even among his own friends, he chooses to take a placating stance despite holding opinions of his own. Not that I won't say anything. I know Mr. Wright's a client, but... You can't just say that in front of people, right? You can't just say that in front of people. In front of Zach, no less. If Ashton were here, I know he wouldn't stay for- Oh yeah, Ash would, go Ash would have, have sucker like- Sucker punched him. Yeah, <laughs> killed him. <laughs> and neither do I. It was the reason why bullies back home never touched my younger brother again after I gave them a taste of their own medicine. He might be inches taller than me, but I'm pretty sure I can still land a hit or two. Maybe. If only I'm not going to get in trouble with BRC for it. But before any punch can be thrown, Ma'am Hana cuts in. Lucille Mitchell Wright. Lucille. Ooh. 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 <laughs> the full name. And a voice too firm, demanding his complete silence. What? <laughs> Instead of answering, she merely crosses her arms and shoots her husband a sharp, disapproving glare. That seems to have done the trick. He immediately shuts his mouth, but not before muttering a few inaudible words under his breath. Interesting. At this, Ma'am Hana only sighs and rolls her eyes, more than happy to get back to the topic at hand. I'm sure she knows what she's doing, love. She got us the house, remember? Who knows what a little positive vibe can do? It could even give us 
what we've been eagerly waiting for all these years. What have we been waiting for? I don't think I was ever informed of. Nothing you should worry about right now. Anyway, we've still got a few things we need to discuss with Rosie here. Over lunch. I hope you don't mind, Isabel. We'd love to take you with us, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Go ahead, ma'am. This will take time. That's why there's two of us working on this. Rose looks like she's about to murder someone. <laughs> Probably me. I'm murdering Luke. Right? At least she won't have to stay in a haunted property. She's getting the better end of this deal if anyone's going to ask me. Oh, wonderful. I hope the next time the three of us meet, it'll be over a closed deal. Of course, ma'am. Please look forward to it. Well, right now I'd rather talk to her than talk to him. <laughs> Forget that guy. Rose hurriedly hands me the keys to the house before leaving, mouthing reminders to secure the place and harmless threats for throwing her under the bus. I return it with a reassuring smile of my own, even if she's the one who often forgets. Sheesh. And just like that, gone, just as quickly as they appeared, fleeting from one scene to the next and leaving me wondering if it's simply what's typical for the rich and famous. I've, if so, I'd rather stay with my rundown apartment or our little shack back home. There's still joy in the smallest things, after all. That's true. And we're just gonna skirt right past that. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. With a house this big, it's not surprising when the ceremony takes a few hours to finish. The sun's already high by the time we've gone through the last room. I can never say I'm a devout follower of my own faith, even when with Mama and Papa's teachings. But hearing every word Father Norman uttered as we went around the house has put me at ease. All of a sudden, the mansion doesn't seem so scary anymore. Maybe there is an end to this? Or perhaps this is the end? Dun, 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 dun. <coughs> Why you gotta put it like that, man? <laughs> Father Norman bids us goodbye upon exiting the mansion's grounds. He has business in the village nearby, he says. A minute gesture to preach out to the members of their parish every once in a while. Reminds me of a distant memory, of helping hands and a few sm kind smiles that helped my family pull through when times were tough. But before he leaves... Isabella, a word before I go? Mm-hmm. Zachary hasn't been really forthcoming with your situation, and it is something I understand it wasn't his to share. But whatever burdens you, know that it's not a permanent fixture in your life. Besides, you have people to bear it with. That's nice, thank you. I bite back the harsh retorts before they come out, masking it with a smile as we wave the good priest off. His words, though meant to comfort, have only left a bitter taste in my mouth. And if they don't believe you, what am I to do? That's true. Yeah, I forgot that, like, no one actually believed her, and then now she's, like, upset about that. Yeah, literally nobody. Yeah, literally nobody. Not even, not even Becca, man. So sad. A hand lands briefly on my shoulders, taking me out of my thoughts before they take a sullen turn. But my smile doesn't quite reach my ears when I turn to him. Say, do you, you want to go, go somewhere? somewhere? Right now? Where to? Anywhere in the city. I'll leave it up to you. Hang out with that. Oh, What's the horror so about it? Nice. It would have hurt. I've got some man, our relationship with Zach is like skyrocketing, man. God. My God, he's gonna be our best friend by the time this is over. Oh, I know. There's a shop I wanna check. Is it real food this time? Let me guess, Rebecca. She's just worried about you. Even I can't eat that much instant noodles. Think of it as a talent. Let's just go, Zach. A smile, a real one this time, devoid of any unpleasant thoughts. Regardless of what happened between us these last few days, I don't want to think harshly of them. Oh, that's a nice park. Zach had me wait on a nearby bench upon arriving prior to going off somewhere. He hasn't returned since, and it's been a good 20 minutes of being alone entirely to my thoughts. In this weather, the city park gives off a lazier and more languid vibe than usual. Where children aren't usually seen running around and playing, there are now people lying, uh, leaning back on their picnic blankets, simply enjoying the afternoon sun. The smell of food drifts from nearby carts, and in, if the wind blows in the right direction, one would catch the whiff of freshly trimmed grass. Now I just now noticed this chick back here. Doesn't she remind you of what's her name from Ruby? I forget her name. Oh, um... I know exactly what you're talking about. The, the headmistress lady. Yeah. I can't think of it, but that—that that is, I, I, I yeah. Her name. I mean, the hair is a little different, but yeah, it does remind me of her. 
I'd gladly sleep on this bench if it wasn't waiting for anyone. Soon enough, I see his hulking figure running towards me, carrying a medium-sized box on one hand and casually waving the other at me. He's panting when he reaches my bench. Sweat drips profusely from his forehead, but there's a grin on his face. How far did he run? <laughs> Sorry. The line was really long. Really long. Uh, you didn't have to run. Sit down first. Nah. I'm, I'm good. They didn't want to make you wait for these. A quick text would have been fun. I already know what's in the blue box before he opens it. Oh my god! <laughs> Precious cinnamon roll <laughs> achievement unlocked! <laughs> oh my god! I mean, she is a precious cinnamon roll, but oh, like. <laughs> oh my god, her eyes are like so big. Cinnamon rolls, all six of them topped with a white cream cheese glaze. Mm, that looks so good right now. <laughs> it does, but oh my god. The very same one I bought after I sold my first property. After I met Zach, Ash, and Becca. Funny how such a small thing could trigger a distant memory, no matter how mundane it is. <laughs> I can't get over that picture. I just looked at it as a wallpaper. That's so funny. I don't say no to free food, but why is he getting me these now? What for? He leans on the empty space beside me, wiping the sweat off his forehead before answering. An apology. And it is thanks. But yesterday and the other day. You don't have to buy me anything, Zach. You were upset. I haven't been yourself recently. But you've kind of missed that, you know? Are you just saying that, or...? No, really. Rebecca told me. You know how she is. Ashton, too. Ashton was an ass. <laughs> he should have been named Ashhole instead. He went a little overboard, yeah. Now I can talk to him if you want. He'll still tease me about it, even if it's Rebecca telling him to stop. Besides, I can handle it. You always do. And yesterday, when you talked me through my little slump, I thought, hey, I want our old Isabella back. Are you... are you still upset? How can you think of that face Aww. either? <laughs> there are times when I wish Zach had been my big brother, or Becca my older sister. Maybe life would have been a little easier then. Maybe Papa wouldn't be as sick as he is. Maybe... maybe I wouldn't be alone here. Aww. Not alone. But then again, if he is, if they are what I wish them to be, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have met Ash, too. Life back home is tough, but for all of that, I I wouldn't change it for one selfish wish. In the city of 68,000 people, I had people I could depend on. Three of them, in fact. When you think about it, when you compare the numbers to the odds of finding someone like them, amidst the sea of nameless people, I'm lucky. Thanks a lot for today, Zach. You didn't have to, but you did. I can always count on you. Just me? No Ashton or Rebecca? Oh boy, they won't be happy to hear that. I don't mind being the favorite, though. <laughs> no favorites, but you cook better than both of them, so that's a plus. <laughs> it's always been food with you, ain't it? I mean, food is the, the key to a person's heart. No, it's the quickest mm -hmm. way. Don't put it like that. You're making me sound like a glutton. I'm not saying you are. But it does feel good to know there's someone I can invite for food to be able to eat all of it. Only that? I thought we were also art buddies. Oh, that too. Uh, but the food thing really stands out when you think about it. You do eat a lot for someone your, uh, size. Low blow. I take pride in my height. <laughs> so, uh, is it okay now? You feel better? Because does it still scare you? A little. I'll be okay. I'll... I'll figure it out. Somehow. Somehow. It's not as bad as the other day. And Father Norman helped too. I should have brought something to thank him. Oh, we could visit him anytime. He loves hearing from the young ones. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty young himself, though. He isn't that old, is he? Don't know. He doesn't tell. He looks like he's in his 20s, maybe early 30s. I'll say early 30s. Yeah. I think I might have seen his face somewhere before, and I just couldn't recall where or where. Ash says he looks like his boss or the boss <laughs> at the local pub if he squints. Don't take his word for it, of course. He might have accidentally inhaled something from the forensic lab again when he said that. <laughs> this time, the laughter that comes from both of us is genuine. Back to the usual. Things may have not been the easiest lately, but it certainly isn't the worst that has happened. Not yet. 
<laughs> we do end up sharing the cinnamon buns between us, despite Zach's insistence that it's only for me. But more than the food, there is relief and contentment. This is only the beginning. I'll help you with him, best friend and not. No way. I can take him on. Still an extra muscle wouldn't hurt, yeah? Just let me know, and I'll back you up. My sister knows this one thing to shut him up when he's being his usual self. Ask me what it is whenever you want, and I'll spill it. I don't think that's necessary, but thanks. I'll keep that in mind. He leaves me a, with a smile and a wave. They were talking like they were planning to mug him. <laughs> oh, I don't know about mug him, but like... Off to some new gig again. As for me, we still need to talk. Becca, Ash, and I. But petty arguments aside like the adults we all are. This, however, is a start, no matter how small it may be. I just hope... I just hope I can keep them safe. As a light wind blows again, sending dry leaves swirling and the distant smell of earth into the air. For the first time, the sunlight feels less harsh. Maybe a walk is good? Walks are good. I need to visit the grocery, too. Come to think of it, wasn't there an art store that opened recently near the park? There goes all the money. <laughs> there goes all the money I just got! <laughs> food and... Art supplies. Art supplies and food and food. And food. And food. <laughs> well, he was the easiest one to talk to, so... Mm -hmm. mm, this, I'm just imagining the, Be Be the Be Becca or the Ash conversation. And then we go, mm. the, the cat's name is Barusiev. The cat? Oh. Or at least that's what the caller says. <laughs> a cat? There's a so, cat somewhere. It's an odd name to give a cat, in my opinion. It sounds like an angel name. But it speaks grace much like the one that carries it. It's chosen the way he swishes his tail and his eyes follow my hands every movement. I'm not sure what he finds fascinating in me, to be honest. I wasn't the very picture of grace when he found me, after all. It was a bad idea carrying two heavy bags of nearly bought art materials and groceries without help or a sure ride home. In hindsight, perhaps I shouldn't have bought all of these at the same time. I didn't even make it past the park. And now I'm suffering underneath the glaring afternoon sun, hunched up on a park bench and drenched in sweat, and the company of a cat curiously watching me at my every movement. I hope it stays where it is. It's just a black cat, but back at home, they're considered ill omens. Why? Oh, but I love black cats. I love mine. They're, they're the best. D don't look at me like that. I can act graceful as well if I want to. Not that I've ever acted graceful in my life, of course. Growing up with rowdy younger brothers and a sister does that. Or maybe it's the opposite. Mama used to call me a little troublemaker before. Well, graceful or not, there's no use moping. A short breather and then I'm off home. Besides, it isn't like the company's bad, even if it is a cat. As long as it doesn't bite or cross my path. Well, where's your owner, anyway? He has one, doesn't he? An owner? That's what the collar's for, isn't it? A bandage is wrapped around one of its paws, though. I wonder what happened to it. Did he run away? Well, if you don't have one, I won't be able to take you in. My apartment doesn't allow pets. I tried to bring one home before. A cat. Not black, of course. <sighs> and Rebecca threw a fit before the landlady could. I take a small packet of sweets from one of the bags beside me and pop it open. <coughs> From about to put one in my mouth, he meows. My hand stops. D do you want one? He doesn't meow again as I'm expecting him to, but I take his unblinking gaze as a yes. I shift the piece to my palm and hold it out to him wearily. He sniffs it once, twice, before- Barufia! Oh, it's her cat! Yeah! Oh! <laughs> Aww. Well, that's nice. Like a good, properly trained pet, Baruthiel responds as soon as he's called. Recognition comes as soon as my head snaps in the direction of the voice. Miss McCullough, hard to miss, what with her height. I'm oh yeah, sorry. she's super tall. Did my cat hurt you? Miss Santos, was it? I'm surprised to see you here. Nice to meet you again, Miss McCullough. Were you harmed in any way? I'm sorry. Barufi was not exactly fond of other people. He even ran away from the veterinarian right now. Oh no, he was just sniffing my hand earlier. How did he get outside of the vet building? <laughs> He's a fast little... <laughs> well, who left the front door open? Mm hmm. My bro feels a she. Oh, she. She, all this time, I thought. The pause in conversation, if this one could be <laughs> called one, is uncomfortable. We're merely two people working different jobs for the same client. Frankly, meetings like this don't happen a lot. If it does, a simple nodding of heads is enough. I want to talk about the cat. I want to talk about the cat. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think. 
Uh, I remember this conversation, but I'm trying to get all this. Get that. Yeah. Stuff off. I hate having that little like notification on my screen, like I, you haven't read this yet. I'm like, I don't need to read it. I've been playing. I know, like I would want to talk to her about her cat, but we did just misgender the cat. I know. I mean, and she got a little pissy about it. She's like, my Baruchiel is a she. I mean, but we could have nice things to say about the cat, but but we don't like the cat, <laughs> so I want to learn about the cat. <laughs> but I mean, talking about her job might increase the. Uh, um, because I mean, they're just like she just said they're just. But she might, for the same yeah. Client. But she might not want to talk about the job either. Like, I don't know. That is. Why are we arguing about this, like, <laughs> like debating in our brains? Well, like, because I don't remember which one upped her relationship status. I don't, like... re I don't remember. This is a very early conversation that... I mean, I think our thing's fine for right now. It's not really... Yeah. Oh yeah, our thing's fine for now. Like, if we mess up too many conversations, it's not gonna go good, but... Um, we got a little bit of wiggle room. Well, <laughs> Why are we struggling? Uh, if you want to talk about the cat, you I talk wanna, about the cat. I want to talk about the cat. Or we could save and then like if we... We're not safe scumming. Okay. okay. Alright. What did it do? That oh, it went, went down. down. Well, that went, uh, that, went way, that went way down. Holy crap. I'm sorry. I keep my tone cordial and warm. I'm actually surprised you have a cat, Miss McCullough. And why exactly is that? There are a lot of people who have pets. Yeah, but not a black one. I'm amazed you're taking care of one. I don't understand what you're trying to get at. Is there a problem with my cat? Oh, she's angry. No, not at all. She's very sweet. Just in other cultures, aren't they a sign of bad luck? Back at my home it is. My grandmother used to tell me stories about it and... Nothing has happened to me so far. Displeasure is evident on her face. Ah, of course. I've forgotten that for other people, black cats are an omen of good luck. Here you go again, running your mouth off as Isabella. I wreck my brain for a way to remedy the situation, but she holds out a hand. This is a good place to stop and end this conversation, don't you think so? Hmm. It is. Good to see you again, Santos. A complete dismissal if I've ever heard one. Ow. We can't fuck up anymore. Ow. <laughs> I watch her as she leaves, though she stops shortly before crossing the threshold, separating the park from the street. She faces me again, looking for something she has forgotten to say. By the way, about the Ermengarde Mansion, with my clients, it's the rights, I mean, I hope you don't mind me asking, but has the deal been finalized? There's still a few papers they need, but the house is more or less theirs now. Ah, uh, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Wait, I... About the mansion. The, uh... The letter. The same one they saw. Whoever she is, she's asking for help. Someone. I want to tell Miss McCullough the urban legends aren't just legends anymore. They're real. She's not going to believe me. D don't mind me. I, I need to go, too. Have a good day, Miss McCullough. I hasten to pick up all the bags I've left on the bench and ran as far as my legs can take me. In that moment, when I'm carrying in my hands weighs far lighter than the overwhelming guilt trying to consume me. Home. I want to go home. Anywhere where I won't be reminded of the house. Of her. Of my own cowardice. <sighs> the food tastes less appetizing tonight. A pity. One would think that someone who had been on a continuous binge of instant noodles would find a home-cooked meal enjoyable. But it isn't. Hunger isn't what is gnawing at me tonight, neither are my sore muscles. The TV runs loudly in the background, but what it says barely registers in my brain. It's hard when the things you're trying to forget keep returning to the forefront of your mind. It distracts you. Eats at you. Devours you. I wish this would stop. I wish I wasn't the one who picked it up. I wish it was somebody else. In other news, a woman was found dead in her home. That's great. I'm glad. <laughs> That has happened. Huh? Wait, what? Wait, what? You knew about this! Mm -hmm. Rose? Oh 
Oh my god! She did. Wow. Rose? Discovered lying in a pool of blood in her two bedroom flat with the words help me repeatedly written on the walls. Fuck? At least she's not smiling like that in that picture. <laughs> no. No. This isn't. This isn't what I want. This isn't supposed to happen. None of this is supposed to happen. No one's supposed to die. These are just stories, right? Legends. That's what everyone has kept telling me, so why am I- I- Immediately I rush to my study table in search of my phone. My hand, cold from dread, clings tightly to it as it touches its edges. A piece of folded paper, the letter, lying unassumingly beside it, slips to the floor when I pick up the device. But I pay it no mind. There are more important things. Right now. Right now. I need to call her. I need to call her. I was with her. I was just with her not too long ago, and she was okay. No. 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 It isn't Rose, I'm sure of it. I just talked to her, and... A sob escapes me, and hot tears begin to blur my vision. One after another, they trickle down, weighted by the very same guilt I refuse to admit I've been carrying from the start. The same one I've been hiding from. But we didn't even show her the letter, did we? No, we chose not to, right? Yeah, we didn't show it to her. So, like, how is she dead? I'm so confused. The same one that has put the people I care about in danger. I guess it doesn't matter who has seen it. Or maybe it does. Well, I don't, I don't... My hands shake as I navigate to Rose's number on my contacts list. She'll answer, right? That's what she always does. Well, I don't exactly know either, but I know there's a thing... And I think they, like, vaguely mentioned it, but, like, people at BRC that have worked on the mansion just, like, never showed back up to work. Hmm. So whoever really works on the house ends up... <laughs> Anyone that works with the house. Mm -hmm. She'll pick it up, tell me to turn down the waterworks, and call me a wuss afterwards. And, like... Please answer, Rose. It's the... And then, like, the people that he sh she's shown the letter to because of the fact that they're now tied to it because mm -hmm. they've seen the letter. Yeah, the fact that they've, like... Mm. So whether we showed her the letter or not, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Oh my god. Well, I thought I was doing something nice. No, the only thing that <laughs> affected was just relationship with Hana. Oh, okay. Funny enough. Wait, did our relationship go up with her? No. It didn't do anything. No, I think there was, like, another conversation. Again her. and again, I dial. Whispering. Praying. Pleading. Come on, Rose! Don't do this to me! Please pick up! I know. I know you're there, Rose. You're not dead. Please tell me you're not! This adds to the series of deaths, disappearances that has plagued Lowe's born in the recent years. The authorities are currently looking at a possible link with the notorious Anselm Butcher case. The TV runs loudly in the background. The deafening static sounds from my phone speakers. But in my ears, I can only hear the screams. Her pleas, her whispers, help me. We are not safe. We are not safe! <laughs> we are not safe! A buzzing sensation jolts me awake. My body still wants to sleep to forget what I heard, what I saw last night. Did no one call her about this? I feel like someone would have called her about this. But it's there, nudging, prodding at me. Slowly I become aware of how awkward my position is and the aches that accompany sleeping in a curled up position the night before. If I even slept at all. The memories are impossible to forget now that now that now that Rose is gone. They say it's easier what you say it out loud, instead the words weigh heavier on me each time. She's gone. Gone because of me. Gone because of the letter I was too curious to look at. I should have been more careful. I should have just kept my mouth shut. I should have destroyed it before anyone else had gotten involved. But, I mean, even if we destroyed it, there's no guarantee that it would have, like, even... And she didn't even see it anyway, so it, the letter wasn't even a deal no, with her. No, and I don't remember, like... It be I, I she we... was doomed from the moment she chose to work on the house. Well, I know, pretty much. I think there's something, like, with the house and with the letter. I just don't remember... How or, it's actually, linked. or I actually don't really know. That's the one yeah. thing that I know. I don't really know what the. Hmm. I should have. Notification light on my laptop blinks incessantly, mockingly when I look at it, as if it's calling me back to a sense of normalcy. 
I cook it, nevertheless, out of habit more than anything. To all BRC employees, in light of the recent and the events, there will be an all-staff emergency meeting from 1 to 2 p.m. Attendance is a must. Company changes, new hierarchy, and policies will all be discussed during the meeting. Everyone is expected to bring a copy of their own attendance logs and sales reports from the last six months to be submitted to your respective managers for review. We're expecting everyone's cooperation. Joanne Alice Scholes, BRC manager. If these were one of the typical days, I'd happily comply and get myself to our office. Today, today my limbs just feel heavy. On one hand, going will keep me busy, take my mind elsewhere. On the other, the place itself is a stark reminder of what my own fears have cost me. Oh boy. It's not going to increase anybody's relationship, so it's like a matter of what we actually want to do. Um, I'm actually going to save. Not that we're going to, you know, change our choices, but just because I haven't saved in a minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's hard, because, like, when you're really upset about something, like, literally, her, like, one of her best friends just died. So it's, like, that's hard to... But also, everybody, like, processes it different, so yeah. it's either they immediately work on something to numb the pain, or just sit and wallow in it. Yeah, but everybody, like, heals differently, so, like... Would Isabel feel better going to work, or would she feel better, like, staying at home? If it was me, like, and my, like, one of my best friends just died, I, I wouldn't go. Like, I couldn't. There was no way no, I, I would be it. able to physically do that. Like, put up that farce, you know, <laughs> like, of that I'm okay, when I'm obviously not. Um, I wouldn't even lie about it. I'd be like, look, I'll show up to work and do what I need to do. In, yeah. and no one else is able to do it, but I am not okay. Yeah, but if I had the choice, I probably would stay at home, but this is Isabel we're talking about, so. But she has that. I would think maybe her going to work, like, keeping her mind focused, and then, like, her, like, having to face it might help her more, but it also make it, it also might make it worse if she actually sees it. And then, but her wallowing, you know, in it is also going to be bad, too. For, oh, other, yeah. for other reasons. So, even if she's not, like, because it's, in a way, it's, like, her um, avoiding it. But there's reasons to do either or. I don't know. If it was me, I would stay at home. But Isabel is a different story. <sighs> That's a hard decision. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's not going to, I mean, not make anyone's relationship status go down, I don't think, so it's just about how we think she's going to feel better. Um, and as soon as they signed off on that house, too, in the middle of right. it. Right. So I think she's got, like, those few more stuff, but I think she's also going to get a lot and of they also shit. say attendance is mandatory, so, like, that... I don't really think you can get out of that. So that meeting is, like... Because I think, uh, I'm pretty sure part of it is because they heard on the news, hey, Rose got literally murdered and has helped me written so, a bullet everywhere. So, yeah, that, and uh, they have to, you know, with her dead, figure out what who's going to do the paperwork that she has and stuff like that. But, um, I would say they're all grieving at the yeah. company, so... with it being a mandatory thing too I mean yeah she's gonna get like really which it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be like oh you didn't show up to the mandatory meeting like some places do mad at you but a lot of like a lot of companies are like that even if you're going through a hard time like yeah, they, they, don't, don't, they don't mentally care. they don't they don't care about your mental state they just they want you to be there when they want you there and I don't want us to get ripped for not going I would say probably yeah go. even though it's gonna be rough I, I think we should go Moping won't get me anywhere. It's just like one of those things, isn't it? This is just one of those things that just casually I mean. happens all the time. Like, this is fine. Everything's fine. You deal with it with a smile no matter how pain things get and hope for the best. I hate faking smiles, though. It's awful. Although my whole body feels like lead and my limbs are sore, I push myself away from the chair and head for the shower. The letter I dropped on the floor last night flutters open as I pass by, unfolding for no one else but me to see. Every word written on it glares back at me. They sneer. They ridicule. 
like living beings fully aware of what they have done. With the huff, I pick it up and shove it in my bag, perhaps with more anger and frustration than I'm used to showing. This too I'll deal with. Somehow I'll find a way to make things right. I have to. Before it takes more people from me. Even if I must do it on my own. And that's the thing, too, is, like, she just constantly has this letter. And it's like, mm -hmm. what do I do with this? Like, because, like, if she burns it, it could make things worse. You can't, she, re you can't really hide it because someone else could find it. Oh, she just I mean, leaves it at her apartment. But, and she's and not, constantly, and carry like, it carrying it around, and it's just constantly this reminder of... Like, I would have shoved it in the bottom of a drawer. But it might just show up at her work anyway. Like, I mean... Well, well, well you gotta test that theory instead of just, yeah, just like, continuously carrying right. it around with you. But, like, she just always has that reminder with her all the time, that that thing is there. And it's just unsettling. Like, papers rustling, telephones ringling, ringing, feet shuffling... Overall, today looks like a typical work day at a Briar Realty Corporation. Except it isn't. The air is thick with tension and unspoken questions. No doubt everyone present has already heard about Rose. If they missed last night's report, they'd likely see it in the morning news, in the papers, or on various news sites on the internet. Yeah, word, especially in an office, word spreads really fast. Overwear is a bitter reminder. In fact, everyone's giving me a wide berth, as though the mere mention of Rose would be enough to trigger something in me. It's appreciated, but it only serves to create a bigger hole in the place Rose has left. After lunch, my boss calls for a meeting. I don't have to look up from my work to know what it is about. He's in a strange, pensive mood today, probably out of respect for a dead colleague. Oddly, I'd appreciate it more if he just shouted at me today. Anything is better. I'm sure you've all heard of what happened to Miss Cooper. She was a valued member of our team, and she will be missed. There's no date for a funeral, yet. But those who wish to attend, kindly speak with your respective supervisors. By the way, has anyone heard about our still AWOL staff? None? HR, you know what to do. Santos, a word? In my office? At the end of it, I've been given the entirety of Rose's workload, including finalizing the rights papers and have been promised an ample conversation for my efforts. I think he's expecting me to be happy about it. I mean, happy for the money, but like, the not what she wanted, obviously. Said I've immersed myself in my work. I have to anyway if I want to forget. Ugh. Ugh. Employee of the month achievement. That makes me feel real great, thanks. <laughs> time flies when you do, and by the time I give notice, it's already late. Everyone's already gone, leaving me in the company of a radio and a member of our janitorial staff. I don't even know his name. Rose likely does. She remembers people easily like that. I would just people. turn the news off entirely at that point. The radio blares one name after another. Hold on a second. Missing? Aren't they? Still, I have to check. Frantic, I turn back to my desktop. The loud tapping of my fingers against the keys filled the office for the better part of my shift as I looked through everything. The background of about this place, its history from the current owners and list of employees hired under BRC. And I'm right. Of course I am. The RC may have a lot of staff, they may have a lot of agents hired, but I'd remember those names anywhere. After all, they're also part of the crew who worked with us in preparing the mansion for the open house. They're in the letters? No, that can't be. I hope it's not what I'm thinking. But Rose is- Something snaps into place in the fraction of a moment. These people, Rose, the letter. I need to- No, if it's like this, they still won't believe me. I have to make sure of it first. Evidence doesn't lie, that's what Ash often says, right? If I have proof, then maybe... I don't want to get my hopes up yet, but maybe there's still a way I can save them. The letter, my phone, papers, anything that will be useful, I grab all of them and stuff them in my bag. I can't stay here, there's something I need to do. There's something these people should. The noise cuts sharply, sharply through the room, stopping my hand short of cramming a pen into my bag. Someone must have left their printer open again. I may be in a hurry, but I, if I don't turn it off, another person is certainly going to have a fit tomorrow over wasted company resources. Most of the time, it's Rose who does the nagging, but... Picking up my pen in my hand is a welcome distraction as I search for the said object. Each stride my feet takes also echoes through the empty workplace. I've lost sight of the janitor minutes ago. And with me being the only one left, the tapping of my feet against the wooden floor is something I soon, soon learned to appreciate doesn't take me long to find it. 
By the time I turned it off, five pages are already strewn about the ground. The paper tray must have been left ajar. It's going to say help me on all those pages, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Sighing, I pick each of it up to put someplace proper. The pages that greets me next makes my blood run cold. Yep. But notice what isn't written on it. Send this to five people. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say that. But the other, like, times that it's been written doesn't have that either. It just has the help me. The chill that makes its way up my spine is as numbing as the day in the attic. The sheet crinkles under my tense grip. Then why do you think the letter that we do have has that send to five people or else? I don't know. Obviously, that's why I'm playing. I don't know. <laughs> All I can hear is my breathing as it rasps through, the gritted t- through my gritted teeth. But before I can even gather myself, take the first steps out of here, total darkness suddenly envelops me. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no no. And as if hearing every horror thought running inside my head right now, something snaps. A soft creak grating through the thin veil of stillness that has descended in the room. Every muscle, every bone in the body goes rigid at the sound. Familiar. So familiar now. Yet my own traitorous curiosity still pressed me to careful, careful peek over the cubicle's wall. <laughs> it's her, standing in the only exit of the office, albeit facing away from me. She doesn't even need to turn around for me to know it's her mis- it's the same misshapen face, tattered clothes, and unsightly gait. Same person in the attic. Take a step back, the pen I'm holding slips from my hand, and... Oh boy. Oh no! Her entire head turns. Oh no. I'm ready for a, a quick time right now. <laughs> Scream almost escapes my mouth, and I duck under my table as quickly as I can. My heart is pounding hard against my chest. I can hear the bone-chilling sounds of her walk, weird clicking that follows her, and her telltale squelch of something wet as she walks towards me. Nearer and nearer. The sounds are slowly getting louder. The only thing keeping the whimper from escaping me is my hand as it covers my mouth. Someone, please save me. Anyone. I close my eyes, muttering a continuous stream of prayers. Oh my god. Oh, I'm attempting to steady my own breathing. Well, I won't tell you it's not the Z-pomps. Okay, well... They're, they're all different. Right, but... Please, please, don't let her hear me. What is it? No. No, you gotta time it and to get the red. Wait, what? You gotta time the little bar thing to get in the red. What? I did. Before. Oh, I died. Because it speeds up. Our Father, who art in heaven. So I died. Yep. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. <laughs> We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I wasn't prepared! <laughs> the last lines of my prayer have left me. All that remains is a hush. None of her footsteps, nor those chilling sounds she makes. Well, how many times was I supposed to do that? Only silence. Is it safe? Another second passes, and then nothing comes. What? Oh, hi. Okay. At least it lets me. I'll let you redo it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> oh, shit. I was really close. <laughs> My god, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's really hard. <laughs> the first one's not that hard. Well, yeah, it continuously just speeds up the fuck with you. I'm so close every time. It's like right there, and I just I can't do it. Nah. I knew it was the space bar at least. I got that. Oh my god! I can't even get the slow <laughs> one now. I got the second one. I can't. <laughs> do you want me to do it? You can do it if you want to. I'm really bad at these. Yeah, you do it. Oh boy. <laughs> the first one's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. How many times are you supposed to do it? I don't remember. Fuck. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. 
At least it lets you like redo it. It's not like a for sure death. Yeah. There you go. I just don't remember how many times you gotta do it. Three. Okay. Got it. It takes three to lose and three to win. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. I suck at those. I always have. Wait. Our relationship? No. Changed? Oh. I didn't see anything. I had a new. That's weird. No, over the story. Well, I had a new one on over here, too. I didn't see anybody's change. Weird. Okay. Oh. Maybe the game's messing with me. I don't know. It might be. The seconds, minutes stretch out before me agonizingly. Is she gone? Slowly open my eyes to take a peek. There's a weird hair in the air. <laughs> I don't dare move. Oh. Oh, no. In the face of such terror, I can only beg, let out silent pleas to whoever is out there. Please don't let her notice. Please don't let her notice. I I want to live. And that's the end of her chapter. Oh my god! <laughs> that is a terrible place to end! <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, oh my god. I think that's a good... Okay. So now we're home. Well, at least we... Well, Rebe Rebecca's was pretty down. But... Rebecca's well, was pretty down on hers, but like everybody else was at least like normal. So and Zach was great. He Zach loved us. Great. <laughs> he loved us, man. I hope that doesn't like mess with it, like that we didn't get. Not with Becca's relationship status up more. Not. With, I don't think with permadeath. I don't think okay. That with it. I just think it just. I would. Their their conversation just and their, stuff. Just their okay. relationship. I hope not, because I feel really bad that her relationship <laughs> was so down. I was like, uh, No, that doesn't affect... But, like, I didn't really get another chance to raise it back up, so... Yeah, but no, that doesn't affect their permadeath, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save again, because we've changed. Um, interesting that we have gone through her whole chapter. Um, yeah, you wanna yeah. jump into Hana's right Ooh. now? Um, it's been, like, or do you want to call it there? Time to mm. war. Mm. Mm. Depends on how long you think you want to go. I don't really care. I'm trying to remember how long Hana's thing is. I would think, would they all be about the same length? Or are no. the other ones shorter than Isabel's? No, no, definitely not shorter. I know depending on choices that you make for like loops, the final one, it can be either really super short or really, really fucking long. Oh. Depending on what choices and stuff that we make. Because mm -hmm. hmm. I think the one that I saw like got finished in under. Oh, these are in order. Yeah. Right? That's the order oh. that you go in. Oh. So each, Interesting. Each chapter is each character that Interesting. you play. Interesting. Okay, I didn't even think about that. And I was then, just looking at the relationships. Yeah. And then they Interesting. all meet up to a certain point, and then I think like an end game toward end loop chapters when you really tie everything up. Hmm. It just gets if oh. anything is left to tie up. <laughs> but uh, <there's> <laughs> <laughs> depends on who, be, who, how many people die. I guess. Um, who knows? I mean, we don't. We won't really know until we get there. I guess no. where we're at, like with the choices we've made. Um. I mean, I would think that's a good place to kind of, kind of stop. Kind of stop since we. Just I already saved. I'm gonna save again. Like I like to do whatever. Yeah, you just gotta, just gotta, just gotta <laughs> just be make sure. sure that we. And then we can start. Oh fresh my god! I don't want to do that QTE again. <laughs> that was awful. Uh, I'm always really bad at QTEs, though. Especially with ones, you know, that are like that, that make me want to, like... Hello? <laughs> I think we have a ghost in our house now. Don't you say that. That's don't, don't good. Say that. I will leave right now. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to stay here. I have to stay here. But anyways, I guess we'll end there, and we can start with, um... Uh, can start fresh. Mam Hana next time. Um, it'll be interesting to see, like, her personality and, like, how she views things over Isabel. Because we've gotten so much of Isabel's personality up to this point. Um, but seeing the other people's personalities will be interesting. Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna cut it off there and then 
next time we get to it, we get to it. I mean, it might be a couple weeks, but uh, uh, but we'll pick it back up for sure. So thanks everybody so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next part. Bye. Bye.